Firstly, a massive, massive thank you for all of the hard work that has evidently gone into your first draft of your bird song um, essay. It's really, really impressive. And um, I've not had a class who has kind of taken to it as well as you have done. And given the circumstances that you're writing in, it's even more impressive. So obviously, when you've sent me a draft, I've sent it back to you and your heart will probably absolutely sink. You'll look at the comments, you'll look at all my writing and you'll think, oh my God, you know, there's nothing nice really written on here. She's just said, do this, do this, do this, think about this. And I know it seems really harsh and really blunt, but this is part of the drafting process and this isn't something that GCSE English has really prepared you for. Um, but the fact that you kind of have to keep going back and re-looking and re-checking and re-treating your work in order to make it as polished as you possibly can. And it does take some practice and it can feel a bit soul-destroying, hence my picture. You know, you will feel that you're, you're never there with it. Um, but it is a massively important skill to learn and it's something that if you go to university, you will absolutely have to um, take charge of yourself. You get very little advice from tutors there because they're expecting sixth form to teach you how to redraft your own work. So I'm hopefully helping you to start to do this and it'll become more and more second nature for you. But as I say, there is a way to go. Please don't be downheartened by this. Sorry, disheartened by this. It's just a natural, um, it's the natural cycle of the process of planning and redrafting. So my comments on your essays are kind of the first part of the redrafting process and I've really focused in on this in terms of my marking looking at your introduction to really get that as good as we possibly can and as strong as we can making sure that the line of argument is really coherent and that you are directly answering the question all of the time remember for band three C grade and above we need to be clear and relevant throughout so I've really made that a focus and then obviously moving to band four and higher you've got to be coherent and thorough so thoroughness is having the very best examples that really exemplify amplify what you're thinking. So my advice is designed to, to help you achieve those things. There will be another re redraft, unfortunately, I probably shouldn't have said that now, um, but that will focus on something different. But priority for draft one is getting that shape of your argument and the weight of your evidence absolutely spot on. So before we move on to look at some specifics in relation to the type of comments that I've made, these are just some stylistic points that I want you all to just double check and make sure that you're happy with. Perhaps when you've done your next draft, you get somebody to check this through or read your draft through, have these six things in front of them and just make sure that you are meeting those things. These are quick and easy things to fix. And then as you are reading this through, these are four things that I think might be really helpful for as you start working. Um, read off paper rather than the screen. It, it's, it's easier and you, you'll take it in much more carefully. So if you can print off your essays and have a really good re read through of all of my comments. When you do start redrafting, um, I would work on one bit at a time, work on getting your introduction right, leave your essay for a bit, then go back and look at paragraph one, do as much work as you can on that, leave it for a bit, leave it for a day, go back and, and keep working, keep having a break after each one, otherwise I think you'll get a bit bogged down. However, by the time you have got to the end of your essay and you've worked sort of systematically through each area of advice, um, have a read through in a single sitting. Again, get somebody else to read it through with you just to make sure that it is all fluent and that your paragraphs connect with one another. If you do it section by section, you might have paragraphs that are disjointed. And remember that we're wanting our line of argument to build up and to reference that your thinking is developing and pushing your interpretations further. So reading again, once it's all complete, will just help you to check that's the case. I sometimes find it's really helpful to actually strand out and create a separate document where I have my introduction and then my topic sentences on only and I have a read of those through to make sure that those things hang together. If they don't then it's time to go back and think and reconsider just a little bit more. So for a number of you a lot of my advice is about clarifying the arguments and it might be that you have to do a whole rewrite rather than just insert individual ideas because then you'll lack fluency and coherency. So sometimes it's better just to have a look at the paragraph that you've written, think about what you want to sort of say from it, but then I'm going to start the paragraph afresh using the advice that I've given you. Um, that will be particularly true of those of you who have got some really great content in paragraphs, but you're not really addressing the debate of your question. So you need to think about the bits that you can use but then almost rewrite to shape them towards the question angle that you have. If you're thinking or wondering, oh, well, does that advice really apply to me in my paragraphs? It probably does if you've got red sections in your work. This is where I've kind of done an overview of perhaps the whole essay or 
a paragraph and I've said, you know, you've got some good content here, but you're not hanging it together in an argument. So here's an example of somebody's um, that I've sent them. And for them, they'll be looking back through their essay and thinking, OK, so what have I already written that would match part one, idea one, that I've had established for me here? And I would kind of put all of that together. What have I written that will match idea two and then idea three? You'll have then a variety of ideas, but they won't hang together at all. And therefore, that's when the rewrite has to come in. So you're weaving your ideas together to build it into the structure that I'm suggesting for you. And the red sections in your work will absolutely help you to do that. Others of you will notice that you perhaps haven't got that many red sections, but you've got more comments along the side. I've done a screen grab here of one so you can kind of see sections of text and comments that I've written. This is where actually your argument is hanging together pretty well. Um, and it's just about refining the level of detail, perhaps of your analysis or some better examples or just tweaking expression. And so the comment boxes, if you kind of see them on the side of your essays, you can go to it. It will then bring up the relevant comment that you relate to and you know which part of the text you need to make the tweak to. So that's for much more precise changes to the text. So once you've done both of those things or one of those things, then again you go back and as I say reread and you're really thinking about am I am I really answering that question? Am I really engaging with that argument? Where am I wandering off that central idea or the central thesis? Um, or where do you make a point? but then kind of move on. Sometimes as a marker, you kind of have an idea, a student provides an effort, piece of evidence, and then they, they move on to a different idea completely. And as a marker, I'm thinking, so what? Why are you telling me that? Why is that answering your question? You need to make your thinking really explicit. So again, when you're reading back through and rereading the changes that you're making, you will be re-editing at the same time, finding places where perhaps you haven't explained the relevance of what you've selected, um, or you are straying away from the question and you need to cut it out or tie it back in again. So again, use my comments to help you, but be starting to redraft your own redrafting to make sure that you're kind of learning the lessons about how to do this effectively. This is another kind of word of warning as well when you're acting on my advice. For some of you, I'm saying you need to move this here, you need to move this there, you need to perhaps move whole paragraphs or just sections of paragraphs within one another. It's all very well moving things to where they would be better placed. But then again, you've got to read those sections in the new context and you need to make sure that there is a fluency between the ideas. You haven't just bolted something in from somewhere else and there that will do. So again, when you have moved, worked around, and um, what makes them, and that's why I said, you know, do it on a Word document so you can do that quickly and easily. Do really think about the fluency of where you've moved it to and, and does everything make sense? And if it doesn't, you need to again redraft to make sure that it does. But finally, I would like to see your work again by Thursday the 4th of June. This gives you two more weeks to work on it. I am conscious that there is a half term. I am also conscious that you need a break, but I don't want you to leave too long working on your essay because then all of your knowledge will have disappeared because you haven't thought about it for some time. Um, so next drafts are in for Thursday the 4th of June. I am thinking that the week beginning the 1st of June when we come back after half term that I won't be setting you additional work. It'll be simply time for you to work on your essay. I'm also going to suggest that if you get really stuck or want some help and advice that we can arrange a Zoom call um, and so you know we can have a 10-15 minute chat at some stage say on the Monday or the Tuesday of that week where you ask very specific questions about the changes that you're making um, so that you are clear and you can meet that new deadline for Thursday the 4th of June. If you would like to have having worked on your essay over the half term and thought about, yeah, I'm happy with this, I'm, I'm not happy with this. If you would like to have a chat, then you need to get in touch with me by the end of the month, by the end of May, so I can set up some calls with you. Um, as I say, there will be another redraft after this. You'll look forward to that. Um, and that will be focusing in on writers' methods and also writing conclusions, which we've left for now. There's no point writing a conclusion until your essay argument is sorted, is the rationale for that. So there is more time to work on this and draft this. And obviously, remember, um, get in touch at all. If you've got any queries or questions, I'm here to help you. But if you don't let me know that you're having difficulties, then I can't do that. So please do keep in touch. So enjoy working on this, grit your teeth, get on with it, work hard as I know you will do and um, I'll be in touch with you all again soon. Take care.